Hi, I'm Ron Hudson. You can check out all the stuff I'm doing at PastorHudson.com. Today I want to talk to you about the ESP8266. And it's a pretty phenomenal little chip. It's taking the DIY scene by storm. Um, the maker community is pretty excited about it because it has 64K of memory, which is twice what the Arduino has, and it runs at 80 megahertz. Not only that, but it has this funky looking uh, squiggly line thing, and that is an antenna because it has built in 802.11 B, G, and N Wi Fi. That's right, it has Wi Fi built into the chip which is pretty phenomenal. And you can get it all for less than five bucks on eBay, though it'll take you forever and a day to get it. Um, so the ESP8266 is a pretty phenomenal chip. And um, they started out connecting them to Arduino and using AT commands over serial connection. Pretty soon they figured out they could program it. Someone came up with um, Lua, Node MCU, Python tools, all kind of stuff. But finally, finally, for the everyday man like myself, um, someone ported it to the Arduino IDE. And that's why you're watching this video because you want to know how to use the Arduino IDE with it. So what you want to do is go over to GitHub and get the um, Arduino IDE for the ESP8266. So just search for it, Google it, or go to github.com slash ESP8266 slash Arduino. Scroll down to um, download the correct release for whatever um, operating system you are running at the time. I'm on Mac and it runs pretty awesome. So once you download it, then go ahead and install it. And you'll notice when you install it that it looks pretty similar to what you're used to. Just a standard um, Arduino IDE. Um, what you wanna do though is make sure that you get the right settings. And I, um, I would have never figured out the correct settings if it wasn't for um, for Callum K, um, who did a YouTube video that showed the correct settings. Check out his website, he's got tons of cool stuff, great stuff on his YouTube channel, um, so check his stuff out. But um, when you go to the IDE, what you wanna do is select um, Tools and Board, and then select Generic ESP8266. Generic ESP8266. Then go to Port. And you want to select the port for your FTDI. What is an FTDI? An FTDI is a USB to serial adapter. I have one here that I got also on eBay. It took forever and a day to get it. Finally got it in. If you're ordering ESP8266 and you don't have one of these, go ahead and order it at the same time. Um, it's for only a few dollars, but um, make sure you get one that has 3.3 volt option this is a little jumper i can go back and forth 3.3 volt or 5 volt this does run at 3.3 volts so you want to make sure you get an ftdi that has 3.3 volt connection um, so you connect it up you will need to load a driver um, i had to get the mac driver for this and once i got it installed then it works fine so let's go back to our arduino ide um, in the Ar in the arduino ide um, like I said, you want to make sure you have your tools. So board, select generic ESP, port, select your USB to serial adapter as it shows up there. And then finally programmer, select ESP tool. Those are the three settings you need to change in order for this to work. Now, how do you hook it up? Well, let's go back. Um, I want to give a little, a little plug to, uh, the guy who made this diagram. Um, his name is, uh, Taylor Caulfield, and I found this on Google Images. It's on his website here, um, how to hook this up. This guy was doing it back when um, you couldn't do it with the Arduino um, stuff. And so it just so many people in the community all coming together to do great things and um, to help us learn. We all learn a little bit from each other along the way. So um, th thanks to uh, Taylor Caulfield at taylorcaulfield.com. But as you can see here in the diagram, you want to connect your pins. So this is VCC. So I have this hooked up to my um, power supply up here, which um, you can see right here. I have a power supply, again, running at 3.3 volts. So VCC connected to 3.3 volts. Um, next is the reset pin, which I'm not using right now. Then we have the CHPD. Honestly, I don't know what it does, but I know I got to connect it to um, to VCC, I'm pretty sure that's what turns on the Wi-Fi radio, but um, don't quote me on that. Like I said, I'm still trying to figure this stuff out. And then um, TX is your last one here, as you can see up in your diagram. TX is going to connect to RX 
on your FTDI. Okay, so they switch. So TX goes to RX, and then RX on your FTDI is going to go to um, TX on, or vice versa, TX to RX, and then um, TX on here will go to RX on your ESP8266. Um, there's a couple other weird stuff that you have to do. Your GPIO zero has to be connected to ground. Your GPIO zero, which is um, this guy right here, this has to be connected to ground when you program it. It's called bootloader mode, and that's what tells the chip that it should receive code. If you don't put that um, to ground, then it will not work, your, IM, your IDE will not work. And then another thing that I found out by much head scratching, trial and error, and finally found it in an obscure um, forum post on ESP8266.com, you have to connect the ground of your FTDI to the same ground um, loop that you have with uh, your ESP8266. So in other words, you have to um, make sure that your FTDI is connected to ground, and I have it right here connected, the same ground that you have if you're using a separate power supply, which is a good idea because these things can draw a lot of juice. Um, I've read up to you know 200 milliamps or more, so that's, that's a pretty substantial amount for a little guy like this. So once you have it all hooked up together, um, then you're ready to go. I have a light and a, and a little resistor hooked up for the um, sketch that I'm uploading right now. But the basics are TX, RX hooked up in reverse to each other. Make sure ground's connected. Make sure this thing's powered. Make sure you have CHPD connected um, to power also, and then GPIO zero. Now, I need to reset it because I connected GPIO zero, so I'll turn it off, back on. You could also put your um, reset pin to ground, and that would also do it, but um, I have a power button, so I just use that. Let's go back to the IDE, and then the IDE, this is a sketch called web server. It, um, it's a basic web server where you can go to a URL, and it will turn on um, a pin. It will set it to high or low based on the URL you go to. So let's go ahead and just upload and it will compile the sketch here. Dun, 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 and it is flashing. Woohoo! Um, like I said, if you get sync error, you know, just double check, make sure your port's correct, make sure you have all the stuff right. Um, you can see here it is flashing, doing all kind of magical stuff. Oh well. And it's almost done. Almost done. Going back and forth. Let's go back to the IDE and done uploading. All right, so what this sketch does is, let me open up my serial connection. The serial will tell me, um, nothing's happening. I'm gonna go ahead and reset it, uh, see what I did. Um, once you upload it, you should actually remove this. Once it starts working, like once it starts uploading, you can actually unplug this because it's supposed to reset and run the code when it's done. I found a lot of times I have to actually reset the, um, the SP8266, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just reset it, uh, turn on my power supply there and turn it back on. And as you can see, if I get over back to my serial connection, it's connecting to my Wi-Fi. It has connected and gives me an IP address of 192.168.1.21, woohoo! So let's go to my web browser and go to my IP address. I guessed that it was going to be that. And as you can see here, it just loaded this up and it's saying that GPIO is now low, which is pretty cool. So if I change this to a one, let me show you here. So this, um, this LED, which is connected to uh, GPIO2, uh, yeah, it's connected to GPIO2 um, and a resistor to ground here. This LED will go on. So I'm going to change that URL to GPIO slash one. And what you'll see is that it comes on. So we'll change that to a one. And the light comes on, which you can see right there. The light is on. I will go ahead and change it again so you can see it. I'll change it to a zero and hit enter and the light goes off. 
and if you watch the serial connection here you can see that it's telling me when I get a request which is pretty cool so um, basically it works it's pretty cool um, so I, I was super thrilled to get this working um, it was a pain I had to figure out a lot of stuff I had to figure build a breadboard adapter and watch a bunch of videos and most of the stuff out there I saw was for um, Lua and all kinds of other stuff so as I figure things out um, I'll post it um, by all means keep making tutorials I watch you guys videos and figure this stuff out too so hopefully this helps you figure it out and go make something awesome